क्षन्नो मित्र शंबरुण क्षन्नो भवत्मा क्षन्न इंद्रो बृहस्पति क्षन्नो विष्णुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो वायोव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी वमेव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या ऋत वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्भक्तावत अवत अवत भक्ता ओ सहना सहना भुन सह वीरक तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषा वह ओ शातिशातिशा आनोति परम तदेशाभ्युक्ता सत्यम ज्ञानमन ब्रह्म योगदनिहितुहायां परमे सोष्णु ते सर्वा सह ब्रह्मण need a minute to locate this bhashya file once again We saw last time how the the teaching has proceeded up till now, and we are at the very last sentence of the summation. And what is the summation of the summation of the discussion of satyam jnanam anantam brahma? That is what we are in the uh, in the last uh, quotation. Which is going to conclude this summation, and that's why I chanted the first shloka, the first mantra here. Um, then we go. So satyam jnanam anantam brahma. We 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 are almost done with that, and then from there we go to the next sentence. Yo veda nihitam bhuhayam parame yoman saha ashnute sarvan kamal kamal saha. सह पुरुषः अश्नुते ब्रह्मणा अश्नुते विपश्चिता ब्रह्मणा अश्नुते सो इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ब्रह्मन द पर्सन हू नोज ब्रह्मन एज दो एज यू नो एज दो सिटिंग इन द बुद्धि एंड दैट ब्रह्मन व्हिच इज व्हिच मेक्स वन रिकॉग्नाइज एवरीथिंग the moment one recognizes that as one self as the truth of one self uh, where is that place of recognition that place of recognition is buddhi alone so once one recognizes that sarvan kaman samashnute all the desires are uh, are uh, fulfilled with one swoop you don't have to go about life fulfilling one desire after another desire after another desire this is how one fulfills things in life one by one ek ke baad ek ke baad ek then you have a big list okay <laughs> marriage check and sometimes uncheck because the first marriage didn't work out so uh, so sometimes uncheck but okay for the for the time being check children check before that education check and then 
what else? Marriage is more of a checkmate, not check. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> children check, employment check, grandchildren check, dream house check. But then the desires don't finish there. Then the dream house must be then uh, you know then uh, then it should be something else. And then uh, then I want to sell the dream house. Why? Because then I you know it's too much to take care of. Then why did you buy it in the beginning, in the first place? <laughs> no, I thought the grandchildren will come. Did they come? Actually, they didn't. They live very far away. Okay, so then, <laughs> then what for is this house? And the dream house actually, by the time you're getting ready to sell it, becomes a nightmare. Yes, it becomes a nightmare. It's no longer a dream house. It's a nightmare of a house that you will, that that you have to sell. And so this way. There is, uh, you know, you keep saying, check, 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 fulfilled, fulfilled. Yeah, but then for every desire that is fulfilled, there are 10 other things yet to be fulfilled, waiting to be fulfilled, can never be fulfilled. And, uh, and you know, you are neither full nor you are filled. That is the idea. And so, therefore, the, the best way, as the Taitri Upanishad uh, points out, is to understand Brahman uh, as the uh, as the truth of the desiring person as the person who desires and that person uh, the, the truth of that person is brahman and so once you understand that then what happens wonderful things start to happen there is no more check 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 one by one it is almost that in you know, it's it's like when you know that because of which everything else is, then all the desires are fulfilled in one, you know, one swoop, one fell swoop. You don't have to keep on listing the desires and then checking them off one by one. Uh, all that is not needed at all. So this is the section that we are going to do, Pravesha. We are going to enter into. And here, there are some uh, very th nice things to talk about. And um, uh, especially nice is the definition of the buddhi. In the, I'm going to just highlight a few points, and then from there we will take uh, some of the things that we, uh, you know, so some of the things we'll take up in, uh, you know, in detail. So some of the things we can look forward to is the definition of the buddhi, the place of the buddhi uh, in this knowledge. And the definition of the buddhi. Very, very nice. And here we are uh, privileged to get some pre Adi Shankara um, views on the buddhi. What is this buddhi, etc.? How did the Acharyas prior to Adi Shankara, how did they look at the buddhi? We will get a small little glimpse. And then Adi Shankara, uh, you know polishes those views and adds his own views, respects those views and adds his own view, of course, taking the parampara forward. Just so beautiful. Very, very, very nice. And so this is something to uh, uh, to look forward to, the definition of the, the, the word buddhi itself. And then the uh, how is this buddhi talked about and everything. The other thing which is very interesting, um, at least I find it uh, very fascinating, is that the place where the Jagat is recognized is the Buddhi. Okay. So, Jagataha Upalabdhisthanam. The place where the Buddhi is, re a place where the Jagat is recognized. Where the Jagat obtains. Where is that? That is the Buddhi. So, if you say Ghataha Asti, pot is there. Where is the pot? You can say, oh, but it's on that table. Okay, pot may be on the table. Pot is on the table. But then, where, how did you recognize the fact that the pot is on the table? This is a very interesting question. A very important question. It's something that is usually glossed over uh, in, um, in Vedantic discussions. But here we get an opportunity to delve into that very, very beautiful section. So, how do you recognize this? The, what is the, you know, how do you recognize the pot? The pot is recognized with the help of the buddhi. So, if there is no buddhi, 
that buddhi you know which is recognizing the pot if it were not there then the pot is as good as not recognized or uh, the pot is as good as non existent if there was no and that buddhi is backed by consciousness blessed by consciousness so you see how it uh, how it works so the buddhi first we say oh without buddhi i will be a buddhu and so i need this buddhi but then and the buddhi itself is is karya these these all words we will visit so this is just a little bit of a appetizer to this section okay the buddhi is after all karya karya means it's a product it's not the producer of anything first and foremost it's a five elements karya it's a karya it's a, it's a, it's a um, what's the what, what is that called it's a, how do you say karya effect effect of the five elements so the subtle tanmatras the subtle elements join together uh, uh, you know uh, express in the in the form of the subtle uh, uh, things in the body like the buddhi manaha etc so the buddhi is a karya okay and very and that karya is now blessed by by what by consciousness that uh, karya is a karya but remember every single thing in the universe is got the presence of bhagavan in it who is directly blessed by bhagavan in fact bhagavan has entered into it we will read this later in this upanishad and so it is blessed by the karya uh, the karya is blessed uh, by what <laughs> what else can be can it be blessed by karana karya is blessed by the cause karana this is so fascinating so the karya is blessed by the karana and then and then leading the buddhi in turn to bless everything with its existence pot is 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 pot is hat is cat is rat is mat is bat is 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 and the buddhi is the one who says is 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 and even when you say is not the absence of that particular thing at a particular time in that particular place is so now this buddhi which goes around cognizing everything thanks to being blessed by thanks to being uh, uh, completely enlightened by that consciousness then how is this buddhi which is a karya which is a product going to recognize that karana very interesting how is that buddhi going to recognize the karana and you know and this is what has got the uh, pre adi shankara acharyas in a little bit of a twist <laughs> this exactly is what has flummoxed them why would it flummox them because There, there seems to be a slight, at least, uh, an overt contradiction, K kind of an overt contradiction. And what is that contradiction? The contradiction is how can the karya recognize the karana? Uh, after all, karya and karana, if you put it side by side, effect and cause. Cause is baliyan. Cause is more important. Cause uh, e, e, you know the 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 effect is one with the cause, but the cause pervades the effect. But the cause is not effect. So the cause is transcendental. The effect is immanent. How can this uh, ka karya recognize karana? How is this even possible? This is this is a very exciting thing that uh, that they are going to that we are going to look at. Okay. So then, with these words, uh, let us look at the where we are in the Bhashya. Uh, that last quote, I think, uh, again I have lost it. I think the screen is frozen. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah. I yes, think it so went so. out. Yeah, it went out for a while. I could not. Uh, it was. It looked frozen. Uh, but uh, let's just. Uh, uh, so let us look at where the Ashya is uh, here. This where we are here. Yeah. 
So that last uh, quotation, which is Anirukte Anilayane Brahma Pratishtham Abhayam Pratishtham Vindate. That is the Athasog Ayangato Babhavati. And here, what is the summation? The summation is basically talking about, uh, you know, a very beautiful summation how the Satya, Jnana, and Ananta, these words, each one is a releaser of the uh, of Brahman from finitude in different, different ways. And we have seen that in detail. And then so he gives two quotations. The first one we saw, Yato Vajo Nivartante Aprapya Manasasaha. We saw that in detail. Now, the last, the, the next quotation, before we get into the next section, is Anirukte Anilayane. Um, so, the, the, that, is a, that, that is again a quotation from, you know, man, I think the uh, second, uh, you know, chapter 7th mantra or something like that, it is there. So, uh, Anirukte Anilayane uh, Abhayam Pratishtham Vindate, like that it is. So, this is the, this is the quotation. So, now, the, um, so then the next, so therefore, anirukte means what? Anilayane means what? Anirukte means that which is not Shabda Vachya, which is not the direct meaning of the word. Which is not the direct meaning of the word. This is anirukta. You know, there is a book called Nirukta. <laughs> a, as a, you know, a, a book of synonyms written by a sage, Yaska, a very ancient and wonderful book. Um, but here it is not Nirukta. There Nirukta means it's an eti etymology of all the words are given. It is Vachyartha. Here it is Lakshyartha. So this is Anirukte. Anirukte means uh, it, he is taking the literal meaning. Na Ukte. The, the, this Uktartha is not there. Meaning Vachyartha is not there. And Vachyartha is not there meaning it, it does not give uh, it does not give into, it does not lend itself to be explained by the uh, direct meaning of the words. It does not lend itself for the direct, you know, vachyartha, it does not lend itself. And so therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, so anilayane means that which doesn't have a home. That which is not understood, that which doesn't have a home. Oh, poor thing. You know, it is it is not understood. And on top of that, it, it is homeless. Ayo, pavam. You can say that. But really speaking, it is not a poor thing. Because it doesn't have a home. Because every single thing that it is, it, it, it's not separate from anything that is there. And it doesn't have a home because it is sarvagatatva. Because it is all pervasive, it doesn't have a home. And uh, so no need to say poor thing. And then that's why it doesn't have a home. Anirukte, it's not understood means what? I mean, Atma doesn't have a complex. If Atma had a human mind, it would also go about with a big chip on its shoulder. <laughs> I, I am the best thing in the universe. Still no one understands me. Everybody takes me to be the body. Everybody takes me to be the mind. I am so ignored. And I am behind every action from the morning, getting up, brushing the teeth. <laughs> Through the night sleeping, I am powering all the actions. And when the person goes and accomplishes something and everybody claps, I am the one. Because of me, that person has accomplished everything. Still nobody even knows A for Atman. And so I am the most <laughs> sad, most ununderstood. Yeah, it can also have a complex. If it had a human mind, the Atma would definitely have a complex. But here, the Atma is so big that it is big enough to include one's ignorance. Oh, it just shines. <laughs> it shines the light on everything, including your ignorance. This is just amazing. It's so big that nothing is opposed to it. There is no you, there is no me, there is no he, there is no she, there is nothing. Nothing is opposed to it. It's all just there and it is so, it's so vast. It's that vast knowledge which is big enough to include your ignorance. Because what is this ignorance? Ignorance is that which is opposed to knowledge. And this oppositional consciousness of knowledge, ignorance, it, it, it transcends. Because ultimately, even you will agree 
that you are not ignorant. Why? Because you know that you are ignorant. That means you are not ignorant. <laughs> if you say, I have come to Vedanta because I am ignorant, then I will say, How, who told you you are ignorant? I will ask you that question. Then you say, I myself understood I am ignorant. Okay. Then if you know you are ignorant, can, can you say you are ignorant of your ignorance? No, I, I am knowledgeable about my ignorance. You see, all categories just crumble. <clears throat> all categories crumble. And so, anirukte means it is not shabdartha, it is not vachyartha. <clears throat> so, anilayane means it is sarvagata. <clears throat> it is sarvagata, it is everywhere. It has, it has no, it has no home means what? It has no adhara. Adhara means no basis. Just like everything is in Brahman, you can in, in with it, heavy quotes. You, you can say everything is, is, is in Brahman. Everything is in Brahman, then where is Brahman? Brahman is not in anything. That is the idea, anilayane. No anilaya, no, uh, no adhara. Because that which, is, which has no adhara means it is the adhara of everything. It does not have a location. Means, you know, where is it situated? It is situated in itself. It is situated enjoying its own glory. Children sometimes ask the question, uh, you know, we all meditate upon Lord Shiva. But then when we look at Lord Shiva, then Lord Shiva is also meditating. Who is Lord Shiva meditating upon? <laughs> then we have to say, Lord Shiva is meditating on his own glory. Sve Mahimni Tishthati lives in that glory. Just wonderful, uh, you know, where there is nothing other than oneself. That which is the Satya. So Satya Brahmani Pratishthitam Vindate. So because it doesn't have, in this Brahman alone, it is as though there. You cannot say it is really there. It is as though there. So, so everything is in Satyam Brahma. And then, so Anilayane, so that which doesn't have a basis in any one thing. And also that which is free from Adhara Adheya connection. What is this Adhara Adheya connection? Adhara means the basis of something. Adheya means that in which it is based. Like supposing I, if I have a cup in that or a bowl, in that bowl I place my key. Okay, so the bowl becomes the, you know, adhya, adhara and the keys become adheya. So this adhara adheya sambandha means one is situated in another, even though for colloquially, you know, we, we, we often say, what is that? Everything is located in Brahman. We have to add as though or as it were, because if we take this literally, then there is no non-duality. Then we have the locator located difference. Everything is so Brahman becomes the locator, and then everything else is located, and the two shall never meet. And how will they be one? So therefore, uh, th that is the idea. So then, uh, so then it has it it it, it has you know anything. So it doesn't have adhyatvam, and uh, uh, so if it has adhyatvam means it becomes a Visheshana for Brahman. Visheshana means an adjective. It is the locator. It has a locator. It becomes, it, it, it also becomes a karta for the whole jagat, in, in literally speaking. Then it will have its own guna. It will become a Vishesha. That's why the uh, Bhashikara uses these two words together. Anirukte anilayane. It because it is not Shabda Vachya. Therefore, it is nirvishesha. No adhara, no adheya problem is there. It is as though sarvasya adhara. It is the adhara of everything. It is the, because of it, everything else is. It has no adhara itself. And in that, pratishtham vindate. Pratishtham vindate means what? Is in that the person is established. Established means the person lives in Brahman, so to speak, in that reality. Usually, where does one live? One lives in the reality called food. 
one lives in the reality world you know what's what's going to come next movies one lives in the reality of okay now what to do that 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 restless reality of things which are uh, of infinitely pursuing the finite that is everyday reality infinitely one pursues the finite and in fact the samsara is the infinity is the only infinity most people will know because it infinitely reproduces itself because you infinitely want to become something or the other all the time so this is the kind of the the, the pursuit and so therefore this is so abhayam uh, pratishtham vindate so tasmin brahmani which is abhaya which is the source of no fear because there is no other thing to be afraid of and so there what happens you know pratishtham vindate pratishtham vindate means uh, is established in that as the truth of the i so usually every day where is where does one live one lives in the head one lives in in one's children oh without these children i can't live one lives in the significant other even though the significant other doesn't think of you as that significant uh, but still one's life is there one's heart is there one's heart is given to the uh, the house one lives in the house okay but the heart is given over to the house and sometimes one lives in one's carpet oh meaning they are sleeping in the carpet no literally their heart is given to the carpet so once i went somewhere <laughs> to somebody's house uh, and uh, their uh, you know uh, with puja swami ji and uh, there they said uh, uh, you know they, they they it was very uh, big house like a mansion very very rich people and then there two people who were workers in the house domestic uh, help two people came to us and said please wait please wait here only don't come inside so i thought oh they may be bringing the you know the, the ceremonial pot that is brought to receive the guru and maybe they were late they are coming the the host and the hostess so i thought that's why they were making us wait no they wanted to roll up the rug small rug <laughs> it was it was that big which was kept at the entrance why because it was 11:30 and madam has said that you have to roll up the rug and put it away because otherwise the uh, fr from that vaulted ceiling windows the sunlight is coming and the rug will be rug will fade so very famous wonderful persian rug and so the heart is given in the rug and this lady couldn't even enjoy the fact that <laughs> swami swami is visiting her house but just swami ji is visiting the house and she couldn't enjoy she was just all the heart was all wrapped up in the rug <laughs> and uh, so like this you know the, this is where the pratishtha is please understand the word pratishtha so the pratishtha is in the rug the pratishtha is in did i turn the switch off the pratishtha is in did i lock the door and thank god all these things are not there in zoom classes some in some ways it's a relief but otherwise the pratishtha is all this the pratishtha is i am so kind to everybody how come that person was so unkind to me so the pratishtha is i am not having a good life that is bad in enough but then the other part is mo even more important how come the other person is having a good life he also or she also should have a bad life and so the, this is where the pratishtha is the everyday pratishtha is given over to all kinds of useless mundane you know inconsequential micromanaging all kinds of things she just leaves one exhausted no wonder everybody says i'm tired nobody says i'm refreshed and i'm ready to go everybody says oh, i'm exhausted how are you doing oh don't even ask oh this week has been terrible and of course this is the 10th week that they have been saying it's been terrible okay and so like this this is the, this is the life this is where the person is living and so imagine walking over from this kind of a quote and quote as though pratishtha where one is rooted into this kind of a thing this kind of a reproducing the strife conflict mundane uh, reality so imagine the the, uh, the 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 upanishad the mother upanishad 
walking you <laughs> like the mother leads a small child no 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 don't go there come here this is where there is there are there is dangerous traffic over there no 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 come here she holds the child's hand and leads it to safety so imagine mother shruti taking us by the hand and leading us from this kind of a pratishtha of all nonsensical things and nonsensical uh, uh, issues to that which where there is none of these kinds of issues none of these problems and what is that that is one self so imagine the shruti making this this person do a about turn a u turn and from this u turn go back to the i and so that is what is called abhayam pratishtham vindate and the study of this upanishad promises that here it's the promise abhayam pratishtham vindate and what happens as, as a result atah athasa bhayam gato bhavati bhayam gato bhavati is no longer afraid why because sve mahimmi tishthati is presiding residing in one's own glory is not anywhere else and so that is how this um, you know this is this this is how the the line should be understood this the this this particular quotation it is abachya abachya doesn't mean it's a curse word because even in the bhagavad gita we have the word abachya abachya badam shabahun vadanti तब अहिता तब अहिता वदंती सो देयर लॉर्ड कृष्णा टेल्स अर्जुना दैट इफ यू वर टू गो राइट नाउ एंड कमिट डेरेलिक्शन ऑफ ड्यूटी इवन इफ यू आर सिटिंग एज अ सन्यासी इन ऋषिकेश इवन लेट्स से यू ग्रो अ बियर्ड एंड यू आर वेरिंग ऑरेंज रोब सो दैट नोबडी रिकॉग्नाइजेस यू समबडी और द अदर विल बी डूइंग अ लिटिल व्हाट इज पिलग्रिमेज they will go to rishikesh and they will say we we'll look at you <laughs> oh aren't you arjuna with a beard and then you say oh somebody recognize me after all this incognito life it feels good <laughs> you know yeah i am arjuna <laughs> they will say thu and spit on your face and they will say all kinds of four letter words arjuna which i am not even allowed to talk about here in the bhagavad gita because it's a family friendly book and i'm not allowed to say those words <laughs> sanskrit four letter words i am not allowed to say and so therefore this is this is also abachya abachya means cannot be uttered but here that's not the meaning of abachya arthe abachya artha here means that which is not the direct meaning of the words vakya artha abachya artha vidyate na vidyate yasya sah for whom uh, for whom the direct meanings of the words do not yield a meaning that is why we say brahmanah avachyatvam asti and so that is this. so therefore what uh, therefore this lakshanartha is what has to be taken uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know recourse to there cannot be anything else no laksha lakshyartha alone works lakshyartha alone works because the direct meaning of the words put you in a spin and then he concludes by saying nilot palavat unlike it's a uh, viparita drishtanta it's like a uh, opposite drishtanta which means unlike the uh, unlike the uh, blue lily nilot palavat means uh, blue lily unlike the blue lily nilam utpalam anaya bring me the blue lily so this is the blue lily is there it is not referring to something else which is not there unless of course you know there is some code word like uh, people who are taking care of big celebrities and bodyguards for big celebrities they have a code word to refer to the celebrities <laughs> and and even the president etc there is a code word and so they if they say the code word let, let's say the you know the, uh, the the prime minister or some in some country is called blue lily so they'll say operation blue lily blue lily needs to go from here to there that doesn't mean literally blue lily here it is lakshartha but the barring that that is when you say blue lily blue lily big lily fragrant lily and unfortunately the words satyam gnanam 
anantam do not work that, that way at all that way at all and so even though there are three words satyam jnanam anantam even though they have got what is called samanadhi karanyam they, uh, they are in apposition and then they have they do not have visheshana visheshya bhava sambandha they have lakshana uh, lakshya bhava sambandha they are they are uh, they are the uh, uh, they are the uh, implied meanings they have implied meanings and we have seen those meanings in detail okay yeah so then um, but then he gives the example of one more uh, last thing he gives the example of this blue lily big lily etc you know why because there is the um, there is that uh, uh, there is that uh, uh, refuting of the possibility of many brahmans being there so if you say blue lily it's not enough why because there are many blue lilies big blue lily okay we are getting closer but there are many big blue lilies okay bring the fragrant kind bring me the fragrant big blue lily this is how it is so that's what so if if satyam jnanam anantham var visheshanas the final point he makes is that then that would mean that there are many many brahmans and that is not uh, correct because that's not what the shruti unfolds and besides even one brahman we are having trouble understanding so if there were many 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 brahmans where to go okay and so therefore this is uh, they, they, so this, this is uh, uh, this is lakshyartha every mahavakya is a lakshya we have to understand that it is not just this tattva masi that we have studied lakshyartha because the word tat that means jagat karanam brahma it is loaded with that meaning and then Tvam, the one who is Alpagya, who is uh, Alpa Shaktiman, who, who is got small knowledge, small Shaktis, of course, a tiny bank account and a tiny, tiny ATM card. And then uh, it's just, you know, completely, what's the word for it, you know, very, very uh, uh, finite, limited. And that Tvam is, is the Jiva, is equated to Ishvara, Tatu. Jagat Karanam, the cause of the universe, who is what? All might, all strength, all knowledge, all vairagya. And the ability to put forth, take back and sustain, sustain and take back the universe. So, on the face of it, there is no comparison at all. There, there is no, you cannot even put the two in the same sentence. You cannot look at them at the same time. Therefore, Lakshyartha. And then that Lakshartha alone works. So therefore here too, this is a Mahavakya. And so this is, uh, so therefore what, uh, so th this is, this is why it is, this is, the, 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 therefore, this is how it is. It is only Lakshartha of Satyam Jnanam Anantam. So it is the, uh, so these three words form what they call the Swarupa Lakshana of Prabhupada. Swarupa Lakshana means that, uh, which the, those that definition which is intrinsic to the word Brahman without which it cannot be it cannot stay without it so that is so without being Satya there is no Brahman without being um, Jnanam there is no Brahman without being Anantam also there is no Brahman and so therefore there it, that, it is called Swarupa Lakshana so then he, he takes up with these words now, all of you have been very patient, which is nice. And so now we can move on. <laughs> we can move on with the, you know, with this background to the next word. Pyo Veda Nihitam Guha Gyam Parame Pyo This is the portion that's going to be taken up. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, so he, he, this is the thing. It is, uh, what is this? This is actually a Rik Mantra. A mantra from the Rig Veda. That's why Brahmana Vipashtiteti, that iti is there. That iti is a quotation mark. And then so this is what it is. He, he picks up the, he, he picks up this particular portion and then he continues. Let us look at the Bhashya. Tadyatha. Tadyatha. Vyakhyatam Brahma. Vyakhyatam Brahma. 
यो वेद यो वेद परमे प्रकृष्टे परमे प्रकृष्टे यो मन्न यो मन्न यो मे यो मे आकाशे अव्याक आकाशे आकाशे अव्याकृताख्ये अव्याकृताख्ये या दैट इज प्लेंटी सो वी विल स्टॉप देयर फॉर द कोटेशन I mean the citation here of the Bhashya, and we'll take this up one by one. So now uh, he says, "Tadyatha, tadyatha. What is that? Tadyatha vyakhya, vyakhyanam anatikramya." So exactly how it was unfolded, this Brahman. What kind of Brahman? That we are just seeing the meaning of the words here. Okay, up till now. So that Brahman, which was exactly how it was unfolded, where. in the last 34 classes okay yeah so do you want me to repeat them say no okay so the so that which was already talked about in the last so many uh, uh, so many discussions and the uh, positing of the uh, what is that called the purva paksha siddhanta everything the opposition and the response everything that which was tad yatha vyakhya tam exactly how it was said vyakhyanam anit anatikram yeah so just the, the without transgressing uh, anything that was told and exactly how it was told that brahman no other brahman not some kind of a new age brahman which some had some new fangled ideas of what brahman is no not that brahman not the brahman in your head not the brahman which you think it is or not the brahman which uh, is coming in some kinds of oppositional philosophies no just as the upanishad talks about it here and which we have discussed over here that brahman tad yatha vyakhyatam brahma yo veda ve veda means vijanati the one who know where nihitam sthitam situated where in a cave buhaya Buhayam nihitam, very famous discussion. So, so then he gives two meanings for this buhayam vyoman and buhayam nihitam parame. Uh, what is that other one? Parame vyoman etc. He gives two meanings, and then in a way he, uh, out of the respect for the acharyas that have come before Adi Shankara, he he gives those two meanings in in uh, in uh, in ta you know in tandem with the uh, tradition and then he also shows us where he differs and why and the third meaning which he gives which is also there it's not that he, he, this meaning he is got from the uh, you know from the sky no no he is not plucked out the third meaning from the sky the third meaning is also there but these two meanings are more uh, prachalita meaning they are more uh, famous and this other meaning is not perhaps so well known but bhashyakara being bhashyakara gives that meaning and then uh, to understand what this is all about so then the first meaning of the uh, the word guha guhate he this is guhate he guhati gu to hide guhati there is a tradition Where is uh, where, where you know that you can make a noun out of the verb literally. So guhati is the verb, so you can make it guhate he for the verb guhati. 
that's the yeah, that, that's the idea for the verb guhati guhate he this is called tipa nirdesha in in uh, pan indian grammar tipa nirdesha so the t is there that tip that that t is made into a uh, kind of a noun and then you decline it like hari so so guhate he guhate he for the verb for the the the, the verb hides what samvaranarthasya so since the word cave, guha means cave. Since the word cave, what does the cave do? It hides things. <laughs> Sometimes it hides swamis also. Swamis and caves have an affinity. <laughs> and usually what happens, you know, the swami will be sitting outside because who wants to sit in a moldy, dark, dank cave? But then, you know, they see, they'll see people coming on a pilgrimage and they'll quickly go sit inside the cave because then the people will come and say, oh, if you are able to live in this cave, and live means what? He's sitting there for five minutes. But if you are able to live in this cave, you must be a very, very great person like that, they think. And uh, they, they shower the Swami with a lot of praise and gifts, etc. And so like this, you know, so the uh, cave is famous for many things. In Rishikesh, there is a cave, Vasishtha Guha, where uh, Lord Vasishtha, the sage Vasishtha, uh, was supposedly uh, meditated and meditated. It looks small from, uh, you know, from outside, but inside is really long, very, very interesting, really long. And it's got a little uh, crystal shivalinga there, very nice. And uh, people can go and meditate. And... I think we should wait till the pandemic is totally over because not much air supply there. And so after that, you can go there and visit. Okay. So this guhate he, samvaranarthasya, meaning it has got already the naturally, naturally the word guha arising from the um, root verb gu to hide has this sense of covering. It hides things. And it's not only the place where swamis hang out. It's also the place where good for nothing, roadside riffraff, you know, hang out for uh, uh, distributing their ill-gotten spoils. You know, they rob a house and then go there. They rob a bank and then go to the cave. That's the hideout place where they will distribute the gains and then they will plot the next uh, robbery. So that's why it is. It is. It is. Uh, it is a place of hiding. So pray. What will this this guha hide? Yo Veda Nihitam Guhaya, the one who sees Brahman as, hide, as hiding in a cave. So, what does this cave hide? What is this buddhi? If buddhi is the cave, because in the buddhi alone, the knowledge takes place, as I said in the introduction today. So, in the buddhi, the knowledge takes place. So, let us say tentatively that the buddhi is the cave. And then what? Then all kinds of possibilities open up. <laughs> if the buddhi is the cave, then you know it becomes a. Uh, it is for every person, it becomes a very interesting uh, journey if the buddhi is a cave. Because, so what is hiding in this buddhi? Jnana, Jnatra, Jnaya Padarthaha, Nibudhaha, Santaha. So, what is hiding in there? <laughs> what is hiding in there is not really visible. It is available as a potential, we'll be seeing this in detail. This is just the translation of the Bhashya right now. So, uh, it is available as a potential. As a potential what? As a potential of uh, the that consciousness, the buddhi, as though morphing into the knower, into the known, and into the means of um, knowledge, such as inference, etc. So, you see how beautiful this... Uh, Definitions. Adi Shankara's first definition is is this. We'll see this in detail. Just just, just understand and enjoy this. The first uh, definition is guhate he samvaranarthasya nigudhaha asyam jnana jnatra jnaya padarthaha. What are padarthaha? Padanam arthaha padarthaha. Padartha literally means the meaning of a word. Word and its meaning is called Padartha. The meaning of the word is called Padartha. How interesting. So if this is the Padartha, the meaning of the word, that meaning of the word as objects of 
of those uh, things which one recognizes as objects, as objects of those words, are potentially sitting in the buddhi. So, what is in the buddhi now? The unthought pot <laughs> is in the buddhi. Very fascinating. The unthought pot is in the buddhi, and the unthought pot cannot cannot be there as a latent possibility in the buddhi. Buddhi without the unthought. Uh, Nowhere. Without the unknown nowhere, the unthought thought cannot be there as a possibility. Then what is the one that connects the knower and the known? The means of knowledge. And so without the means of knowledge, the, the, that also cannot, the, 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 the depart thought cannot even be a possibility. So the jnana, means of knowledge, the jnatra, the jnana karta, the agent of knowledge, and then the object of knowledge, Jnaya, all of them, uh, of all, Sarve Padartha, he's going to say later, of all the things in the universe, is there, the potential is there, sitting in the buddhi, waiting to come into fruition. I mean, just think about it, it's suddenly this tiny little pea brain that one thinks one had, has become so huge, because it holds the entire jagat as a possibility, holds the entire world of names and forms as a possibility, yet to be cognized, yet to be cognized, yet to be cognized, okay, one life over, more things to be cognized, more things to be cognized, extraterrestrial real life, yet to be cognized, it is there as a possibility, it is there, and then that, uh, you know, Will it happen in our lifetime? We hope so, but we don't know. But then there is another life. You know, yet more things to be cognized. So those are all called Sarve Padartha. And, and very beautiful word Padartha. The Padartha just means the meaning of the word. So you never leave the sight of the fact that every object is just a word and its meaning. So the word, even in grammar, the, the knowledge shines. The knowledge shines in the in the vyutpati, in the etymology of the word padartha itself. It's just so wonderful. Meaning, we don't take a single thing seriously. We don't take the word seriously at all. And then what? <laughs> then, sarve uh, padartha, it shines. And it can only shine in three forms. It can shine as I know, I know, I know, jana me, jana me, jana me. I know. Means what? You, it can shine as the knower. Then the knower knows something or some things. Then it can shine as that which has come to light. It can also shine as that which has brought the knower and the known together as jnanam, as the means of knowledge. Only three ways it can shine in the buddhi. And so, this is the, this is the first meaning, where jnana jnatra jnaya padarthaha iti, uh, 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 padarthaha iti guha buddhihi. This is why the buddhi is called guha, because it is a storehouse, a warehouse. It's also a warehouse because you really don't know where the buddhi is. You know, <laughs> that's why it's a warehouse. Where are you? And so, it's a storehouse of all potential cognitions, the cognition of the self and the cognition of the non-self, atma as well as anatma, and that which connects the atma to the anatma in the form of various ways of knowing. It's a cognition of that too. Just so fascinating. I mean, this is fantastic. So this is the first meaning of the word buddhi according to Adi Shankara, buha, sorry, as buddhi. Okay, got that? Yeah? Okay. So the next meaning, he gives another meaning, which is also very exciting, very nice meaning. So he says, good how? Uh, why is there an asterisk? Uh, good how? Okay, so Ananda Ashram does not use the word ni, the upasarga ni. Okay, so ni good how? Asyam bhoga apavargau purusharthau itiva. Hidden, okay, there is another way to look at this, what is hidden in the buddhi. And why the buddhi is called guha? So the jnana, jnatra, jnaya, padartha, ha, nigudha, ha, uh, we, we saw the first meaning. 
that in which the knower no knowledge these three forms of uh, you know the, uh, these three forms of uh, iterations of this consciousness are potential potentially hidden they are as uh, hidden uh, in the form of a potential and then the next meaning uh, of the word buddhi is that the nature of the relationship of the person wielding the buddhi to these padarthas to these padarthas to these things what is the relationship be between the person and these things that are coming up in the buddhi the objects of knowledge there is always desire desire is the connection so you only think of things you desire no no sometimes i think of cockroaches too yes you may think of cockroaches but then even, but i don't desire them yes but you desire their absence so ultimately it's all about desire so you desire it's all hidden in the form of desire it's all hidden 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 and what kind of desires in the form of two purusharthas <laughs> what are the purusharthas bhoga and then what else apavarga oh but uh, don't we study that there are four purusharthas now how come unceremonially they have been cut into two how come they have been cut into two are there four purusharthas there should be four and what are they dharma artha kama and moksha four purusharthas but here only two are given bhoga and apavarga why because there is a certain kind of a way in which adi shankara has reduced the four into two dharma artha and kama all comprise desire based purusharthas they are called bhoga purusharthas because they one pursues these three things for the sake of getting something or another one is pursuing these three things what are the three things dharma artha kama oh artha kama i can understand artha is security and then kama is all kinds of aesthetic and other pleasures but then dharma is should be should not be a part of this that's not fair well dharma is also part of bhoga purushartha you know why dharma is part of bhoga purushartha because precisely because of the fact that dharma you 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 are good why in the hope that other people will be good to you that's why you are good why does anybody want to be good nobody wants to be good no no i want to do pilgrimages i'm not doing it for anybody else's sake i want to do this i want to do that so if you're doing pilgrimages and doing this for certain uh, people's sake all right then uh, you you're doing it uh, for your own sake yes i'm doing it for my own sake why well you know after death i should have a good life i should go to heaven i want punya so that means it's bhoga punya is you know see whether you collect money here or you collect some currency to have a good uh, you know to enjoy a dance show with uh, menaka and urbashi it's still the same you are you are collecting uh, you know something for the for later so it is bhoga still so dharma is bhoga purushartha artha pursuit of security is bhoga purushartha and then kama is of course bhoga purushartha then what else is left moksha that is called apavarga apavarga is a paryaya vachi Uh, shabda for moksha uh, apavarga means paryayavachi means synonym apavarga is moksha so therefore uh, 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 what is this uh, uh, what is this buddhi <laughs> this this guha the guha is where all of the whole gamut of desires are hidden hidden sometimes even from yourself imagine that <laughs> then you say okay i don't know why i really like this thing i never thought i would like this thing but i somehow like this thing so it is that, that, that potential to love something uh, is hidden the potential to pursue something is hidden where in this in this cave of the buddhi the potential is hidden and then uh, and then what else the potential to be tired of being a wanting person with all these hidden assailed by hidden desires 
little ghouls and ghosts in this guha and then you know there is that uh, what is that called in those amusement parks there are those rides no that that ghostly ride will be there it will all be dark and then you are sitting in, in something belted and strapped on and then what it goes and then suddenly one ghost comes and goes boo and then everybody gets frightened and then you go some and then somebody else is hanging there decapitated then uh, with some kind of you know all blood and gore then you get frightened again and then you go and then somebody uh, you know there is no apparition this time but there is some cold air and wet feeling and again you get frightened you know, and then you come out and then you wonder why you paid for it okay so this is the this is some kind of a ride i have i have not gone but i heard somebody who got so frightened afterwards they had some sleepless nights and they they, they were telling me this that it was just a wretched ride so here in you know so this this is the buddhi buddhi is full of all kinds of apparitions in the form of strong desires that keep haunting you like apasmara apasmara is means the one who haunts uh, by desire and memory that that, that little being that beast uh, underneath lord dakshina murthy's foot and so this apasmara is there and so this is how it is and so like this uh, one is haunted by desires so in the first meaning we have the uh, in the first meaning of the word guha we had an objective understanding guha means where no one knowledge no one reside <laughs> but here the the, the 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 relationship between the knower and the and the known is always contentious is always subjective oh i can't have i can't do without this i have to have this and then the so the ensuing sorrow are drops of uh, dank you know water in the cave all this is there and so in the second meaning the the, the cave is a warehouse of desires the cave is a warehouse of all kinds of desires they are hidden they come and haunt they don't know where you don't know where they are they are just intense and so itiva so that is the itiva means uh, you know this is uh, a, a vikalpa means it's an option uh, va means or okay so uh, tasya parame prakriste vyoman vyomni akashe avya avyakritakhe avyakritakhe akashe so tasya in tasya means guhaya in this guha parame vyomni so see this is this is a very interesting this is where a lot of uh, uh, part of uh, you know this interpretations are there in this particular sentence alone we will encounter them that's why i stopped reading the bhashya after this sentence because here we have a lot of material to um, to to assimilate very very important and very interesting so tasyam means where tasyam guhayam in that guha which is what there there is now again in apposition all of them are in the seventh case tasya seventh case guha ya because that's what it's referred to in the first uh, uh, in the bhashya so tasya guha ya parame prakriste also in the seventh case yoman which is chandasam which is uh, uh, not in seventh case but adi shankara converts it to seventh case vyomni chanda sab means it's the language of the veda we don't mess it but for sake of understanding that also is understood in the seventh case so we have guhayam parame prakrishthe vyomni four words in the uh, uh, seventh case so that means what they are all in apposition they are all referring apposition means samanadhikaranya and we have seen the definition of uh, uh, samanadhikaranya Uh, you know, bhinna pravritti na ekasmin vishaye ekasmin adhikarane tapparyam samana adhikaranyam. So, you know, bhinna shabdaka na, so of various words having different words and but ekasmin vishaye tapparyam, but their commitment is to reveal one particular word and therefore it is samana adhikaranyam, words in apposition. We have studied that. so now here also there are four words in apposition so tasyam in that guhayam parame means of the, the most exalted prakriste prakriste means the 
the exalted vyomni vyomni means vyoman means space so here he says akashe in that space avyakritakhe akashe avyakritakhe akashe and so avyakrita khe akashe means avyakrita means unmanifest is called akasha because it is undifferentiated the unmanifest is what is called akasha so therefore what so all these things are referring to one thing we can say tasyam parame prakrishte vyomni avyakrita khe akashe in that so this in that guha which is what which is which is the most exalted place and uh, which is the which is space like uh, undifferentiated because it is avyakrita it is unmanifest oh but the buddhi is uh, not unmanifest buddhi is manifest you can argue buddhi is manifest but then where did the buddhi come from it came from a place of the manifestation where does the buddhi go to when it goes to sleep it goes to a place of de manif a baby de manifestation again and then it comes back into manifestation this is what we uh, uh, you know this is this is one meaning he gives and then this is one of the uh, and the, and here there are kind of two uh, related uh, meanings which the uh, which the acharyas of lore have given and uh, we will we'll look at that also when the time comes but still there is more, uh, a, a little more to talk about in terms of buddhi and guha uh, because this is not the only upanishad where we hear this where we have a discussion about this guha nihitatva it's not the only upanishad there are many upanishads where this guha is equated to the buddhi there seems to be a systemic uh, a systematic kind of a setup which is not and in fact even in the brahma sutra one of the sutras talks about this buddhi and uh, you know the buddhi as guha guha nahi tattvam what is meant what is not meant how should it be understood etc etc one of them uh, one of it talks about that one of the sutras so it's an important uh, 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 it's important to understand what is actually being talked about here but why is the buddhi equated to the guha well for one reason both of them uh, you know the guha is dark the cave is dark the buddhi is also dark one reason and then the the uh, second reason is that it needs a source of light second reason <laughs> both are dark and then we can go on and on the, uh, the the like the cave the buddhi has stalactites of doubt and stalagmites of fear and the dripping uh, you know damp little underground water there of sorrow and bats of uh, uh, anyatha grahanam meaning taking myself to be not what i am and in this brahman is sitting <laughs> sitting means what bhagavan is there but then bhagavan is not known and that's why it is like a guha because you can't even see your own hand in front of your face it's so pitch dark you cannot even count the fingers of your own hand what to talk of bhagavan sitting there as you in you so to speak in the buddhi it is pitch dark because of atma anyanam so that's why the word buddhi and the and the so, so the guha is a very interesting reference to the uh, to this that's why so very very interesting reference and so then what then we have a um, so this buddhi and guha are there like that and then uh, the, then there is one more kind of a connotation in our temple architecture so the temple architecture is also like that there'll be many many entrances at at the beginning to the temple you can come from the front back everything but as you keep going in in inward then the number of entrances slows down slows down and then there is only one entrance to the sanctum so and then they are also they purposefully make it dark the sanctum is purposely made dark it's made of black monolithic walls or uh, granite and then uh, there is no artificial light uh, at least in the traditional temples no artificial light is ever allowed 
and then what there is no um, no source of uh, even natural light cannot come in unless it's a sun temple then it's different so no artificial light no natural light and then the murti the presiding deity is carved out of black stone and then nicely oiled and then it becomes darker still glistening okay and then every day if you keep oiling and bathing the deity it becomes darker and darker and darker so it is it's got you know what should i say generations of oil and lots of love uh, it's been loved up and then massaged and given a bath every day and so it's all dark you can't even see inside it. the walls are black and the deity is black and then there is a small little lamp that flickers little bit of you know little flicker 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 is there and that's enough to light up the few jewelry perhaps the goddess is wearing some nice jewelry the mother goddess is wearing and you say oh oh this is nice it's like a vibhuti of the lord you see the vibhuti uh, that's exactly how how one encounters the jagat you don't see the lord you see the vibhuti the glory of the lord in the form of the sea in the form of the hills in the form of the lakes in the form of uh, flowers you see the glory and here too the the, the nose stand shines of the mother goddess you see the glory you don't know who, what it is but something is shining the 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 necklace gives a little bit of a shine the tiny little dim flickering oil lamp that's all there is no other source of light and the pujari is standing there being from south india he is also dark so you can't see him either and especially if it's ayappa temple he will be wearing black also and so you, you can't even see him everything is dark and then it is time for aarati when it is time for aarati then what happens camphor lamp that camphor lamp is lit and the whole Bhagavan is lighted up from head to toe, from head to toe, with that particular mantra. Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam, nema vidyuto bhanti kuto yam agnihi, tameva bhanta manubhati sarvam, tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati. It is this, this, this the camphor light is vritti jnana. That knowledge which, which does the trick, of lighting up that which is already there inside the buddhi sitting in the cave which was not recognized for want of a means of knowledge that little light is pramana it's vritti jnana which is the pramana prasada and the one holding it is is the guru in fact the, the priests are called gurus in uh, south india kurukkal they say and this, that's what it is you see, they, they, they are the standing for the guru who lights up the buddhi with the words, with well handled words of the pramana, the lamp of the pramana lights up the buddhi. And camphor is used. You know why camphor is used? Camphor is used because it burns without a trace. So it takes away all the ajnana without the trace. And then what? And then you realize that, oh, the Bhagavan I am looking for is, is myself alone, is sitting right here. So for want of a means of knowledge, I was suffering and entertaining all these ghouls of desires and the ghouls don't like the light they they, they go away they go away to a state of avyakrita demanifestation okay so on this wonderful note we will end and then we'll meet again tomorrow to see these uh, sentences in detail om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om So Sanskrit classes are starting back up. So if you want to take them, you know, hang out and then we'll meet in 15 minutes. Om Tatsat.